listeners and subscribers. Thanks for tuning in. So I got a few things I want to talk about. Hopefully this will just be a quick hit because I want to point out something that's happening. Uh, and initially they may seem unrelated, but I think they have more common threads overlapping than we might think, okay? Because I feel like this conspiratorial, esoteric type of rhetoric that's emerging from the mainstream right now is uh, it's the wrong medium to, debu to debut these kinds of narratives. You know what I'm talking about? The, the Area 51 thing, the QAnon stuff, on like that. Because what's happening is it's occurring in a way where it sort of sets certain folks up to be labeled in wholesale with characteristics that don't necessarily represent people's true values, right? And it basically, it's basically making them out to be a government threat of sorts, so they're targets. And you can just hear the talking heads around these subjects. The, the internet needs more layers of security, in other words, you know, censorship, which is just euphemistic for control, in order to insulate the public from whatever the government feels that people don't need to be exposed to, right? You know, something like that. But really, we know in the back of our minds, for those people who have their thinkers on, that these efforts to censor are, they're just poorly veiled attempts to quell dissent and obfuscate truth. Uh, I think that's what we see that's happening. And the same is true for that, the QAnon thing, right? And some of you probably heard, maybe some of you have haven't, but basically this, this guy shot and killed a mob boss because he was influenced by QAnon. And if you don't know about QAnon, well, that, that's a rabbit hole you're going to have to go down on your own. There's, there's way too many schools of thought on that. But the, the thing is, long and short of this story is that the defense is going to claim that Anthony Camello, who was the shooter, he was a QAnon conspiracy theorist when he shot uh, Francisco Cali, okay, or Frankie Boy, the, the mobster on Staten Island, all right? Because reportedly, Anthony was convinced that Frankie was part of the deep state, all right? And there's a few things inlaid there. Uh, first, you have got to understand, there is a push to outlaw, for want of a word, the co opted term deep state and make it synonymous with whacked out crazies that only whacked out crazies believe in something like the deep state okay and that's just one more thing people like myself won't be able to talk about on platforms like youtube and you know you, you now you have to ask the question what is the deep state really the, the bare bones of it is it's just one of a milieu of terms that usually relates to the uh, worldwide governmental shadow networks, okay, the nefarious cabal I talk about regularly on this channel, all right, and it's the lower to middle echelons of the nefarious power pyramid players. They exist in pretty much every government on the face of the earth, okay, it's the low people in high places that finagle agendas, leverage corruption, move money, and make pardons on like that for those with their hands on the real levers of power, okay, that's what we're talking about, and what this push does is obfuscate, all right, it muddies the already murky waters of who's really pushing what when it comes to the NWO. And let's not forget, and in, in case this needs any mentioning, that the NWO and its perpetuators, they ultimately transcend strictly political optics, okay? Politics is just that vehicle they use to usher their nefarious imperatives along. That's it. So this isn't just dastardly leftists or right-wing rapscallions, all right? And that's just one adjunct of it. Like I said, the real nefarious push, the, the underlying message to these things, uh, which is what I was talking about a second ago, is this stuff is debuted in a way that could easily be weaponized against whoever participates in or endorses even the peripheral aspects of a given scenario. Okay, so it's more excuse for the government's plausible deniability when we see these restrictive measures roll out. That's the crux of all this. The QAnon, um, the UFO thing, uh, the, the Area 51, this, they're debuting in a way where if you don't believe or accept the narrative in the mainstream cookie cutter fashion, something must be wrong with you. All right, and this is reminiscent of when uh, Edgar Madison, right, he went to to shoot up the pizza place in Washington over the PizzaGate debacle. Uh, uh oh, <laughs> can we even say PizzaGate? Anyway, you, you remember what the media and the political punditry did after that, right? They went super saying, demonizing, dreaming up laws, curtailing freedoms, and on like that. Uh, it was policy fodder. All right, the same is true here for the Area 51 debacle, and whether its origins were truly organic or not, the rhetoric, the media, and military are leveraging around it falls right in line with what I've outlined, okay? And by the way, isn't it interesting that all this Area 51 stuff spurred up when it did? I mean, this is the, the same time as all the information is coming out about UFOs, right? The, uh, the senators being briefed on the UFOs, the Pentagon admitting they, investi uh, they investigate UFOs, armed forces implementing new policies on UFOs, servicemen and women being interviewed on the mainstream media, now this. Okay, and that was all within just the past few months, so I think it's, it's people out there who are looking at this would be hard-pressed to say that we're not being primed for something. And I think the reality is... Um, 
we're in a situation where the orchestrators can in many ways essentially coax a more manageable response from the public. And those who are deemed unmanageable, well, I think we see what they're dreaming up. Uh, but that's the heart of this stuff. The stuff that's coming out, it's only coming out in a way that benefits the orchestrators and really the people end up taking it on the chops if they don't believe the right way, right? There's something wrong with you if you don't believe our narrative. Anyway, that's it. I just wanted you guys to see the nefarious underpinnings in this and see what they're doing and how they're spinning people who, who believe in this stuff outside of the way they want them to. Anyway, California Carter, signing off.